Anomalocaris. More than half a billion years ago, the world's oceans were stalked by a soft-bodied predator that looked unlike anything alive today. This bizarre-looking animal was Anomalocaris and is widely regarded as the world's first apex predator, the killer whale of its day. Anomalocaris was the largest hunter of the Cambrian period, measuring up to a meter in length from its grasping frontal appendages to the tips of its tail fans. The appendages are thought to have been used to catch and crush prey. Their presence in China, Canada, the United States of America, and Australia suggests that they were present across the globe. The first fossil findings of this animal were body appendages discovered in 1892, and they were described by Whitwater as shrimp, as they appeared to be very similar. But in 1979, Dennis Briggs recognized that the finding was not a shrimp body, but rather a part of the body of a large arthropod. Anomalocaris went extinct as the Cambrian period came to an end. A mass extinction occurred at the end of this period called the Great Permian Extinction. This extinction was one of the first and most significant extinction events. This mass extinction was caused by extreme global warming. Marine life could not breathe, which led to these marine creatures' mass death. Currently, three species of Anomalocaridae are known, Edurocasis, Anomalocaris, and Amplectobellua. Arthropleura. Arthropleura genus of exceptionally large extinct millipede that thrived from the Visayan age of the Carboniferous period to the Acelian age of the Permian period, 346.7 million to 293.52 million years ago, a time when sprawling rainforests acted as the Earth's lungs, drawing in carbon dioxide and breathing out masses of oxygen. It's thought there was 5 to 10% more oxygen in the air during this time, which is one reason why Arthropleura grew so large. The exoskeleton of Arthropleura was composed of some 30 jointed segments. It had approximately 8 pairs of jointed legs for every 6 body segments, and between 32 and 64 legs in total. The word Arthropleura is Greek for rib joint. The largest Arthropleura fossil on record was discovered at Howick Bay in Northumberland, England, in 2018. Paleontologists suggest that this specimen, which is made up of 12 to 14 segments that collectively measure 76 centimeters long by 36 centimeters and weigh more than 80 kilograms, 176 pounds. Scientists note that Arthropleura was, like modern millipedes, a herbivore that consumed woody plant debris, leaf litter, dead plant matter, and nuts and seeds scattered on the forest floor. In Nostrum sevia, Cross a polar bear with a saber-toothed cat, and you'd get something resembling Inostrin sevia. It was one of the largest carnivores of the Permian and would have filled the ecological niche that big cats fill today. Inostrin sevia would have been an extremely fast runner over long distances. Inostrin sevia had saber-shaped canines that could land killer blows on the necks of mega herbivores, such as Scutosaurus. As a proto-mammal, its jaws were packed with other kinds of teeth, too but these weren't used for chewing. It's unknown whether Inostrin sevia was covered in scale-like skin or fur, like its mammalian descendants. That said, researchers have found some clues in coprolites, fossilized feces, that may have been left by them or some close relatives. Smaller therapsids likely had hair, as suggested by hair-like structures in coprolites, implying that Inostrin sevia probably had hair as well lived during the late Permian in what is now European Russia and Southern Africa. It belonged to an ancient group of mammals called the Gorgonopsians that went extinct during the Great Dying, Scutosaurus. There weren't many animals bigger than Scutosaurus during the late Permian, particularly in the cold deserts of ancient Russia. These forklift-sized reptiles weren't just long at around three meters from head to tail, but heavy too breaking the scales at a whopping 1,100 kilograms, equivalent to a black rhino. A lot of Scutosaurus's weight was from a thick layer of rough plates, or osteoderms, that covered almost its entire body. It wasn't particularly fast or agile, so this bony armor was its main defense against its arch-rival in Nostrancevia. Scutosaurus and other large members of the Pariasaur family were among the first mega-herbivores to walk the Earth. They were pioneers in a niche that would later be dominated by dinosaurs such as Stegosaurus, Triceratops, and Ankylosaurus. Scutosaurus looked a lot like these dinosaurs, but was as distantly related from them. 
Interestingly, Scutosaurus's closest living relative is another armored reptile with a similar reputation as a slow coach, the tortoise. Scutosaurus went extinct around 252 million years ago, towards the end of the Permian period. Their disappearance has been linked to the mass extinction event that took place at the end of the period. The event killed off about 65% of the vertebrate population at that time. Tiktaalik. Tiktaalik is an ancient extinct genus of lobe-finned fish. It lived approximately 375 million years ago during the late Devonian period. From fossils found in Arctic Canada, it's estimated that Tiktaalik grew to lengths of three meters. This huge size, combined with large jaws full of needle-like teeth, a mobile neck and eyes on the top of its head, suggests it was a predator, specially adapted for hunting fish in the shallows. Some think it may have even preyed on other, smaller fishapods that lived on the margins between land and water. Due to its size, it was most likely situated somewhere near the middle or top of the food chain. At the time it lived, Tiktaalik had to compete with other predators, such as sharks. To date, experts don't know for sure when Tiktaalik went extinct. It most likely died out sometime near the end of the late Devonian period, around 360 million years ago. Around that time, a mass extinction occurred known as the Hangenberg event. Dimetrodon. Dimetrodon, extinct relative of primitive mammals that is characterized by a large upright sail-like structure on its back. It lived from about 286 million to 270 million years ago during the Permian period, and fossils of the animal have been found in North America. It was a carnivore that grew to a length of more than 3.5 meters, 11.5 feet, and had a large sail on its back that may have functioned in temperature regulation. The sail was presumably formed by elongated vertebral spines connected by a membrane containing many blood vessels. It is frequently mistaken for a dinosaur. However, it predates dinosaurs by tens of millions of years. This species is categorized as a pelicosaur within the Sphenacodontidae family and is more closely related to modern mammals than to reptiles or dinosaurs. Meganeura. Meganeura is an extinct genus of giant insects that lived during the Carboniferous and Permian period. It was one of the largest flying insects ever to exist. The wingspan of the massive dragonfly has been estimated to be about 25.6 to 28 inches, 65 to 70 centimeters. 300 million years ago, oxygen was 35% of the atmospheric composition. So scientists believe this contributed to the incredibly large size of the Meganeura. Paleontologists discovered the first Meganeura fossils in 1880 in late Carboniferous coal deposits near Coventry in UK. It would take five years for scientists to name the creature. Eventually, a French paleontologist, Charles Brongniart, dubbed it Meganeura in 1885. Scientists suggest that the fall of oxygen's composition to 21% in the air relative to what it was 300 million years ago made the Meganeura go extinct. Duncleosteus. Dunkleosteus was named after David Dunkel, the paleontologist that first described the animal's fossils. Like other placoderms, Dunkleosteus didn't have any teeth. Instead, it had two pairs of sharp, bony plates, forming a beak-like structure. It could bite straight through the bones of most animals, making it an apex predator in its time. Dunkleosteus' length is about 15 feet, while more generous ones claim it could have been as long as 19.6 feet. However, the most recent attempt to reconstruct this animal by comparing it with modern pelagic sharks in similar ecological niches turned up a massive estimate of 28.8 feet and a weight of about 4.4 tons, 8,800 pounds, for the largest species. The jaw produced a massive bite force enough to rip prey apart. The bite force has been estimated to be about 6,000 newtons and 7,400 newtons, or 80,000 pounds per square inch enough to crush some of the strongest steel. Dunkleosteus lived and thrived in the marine environment during the Devonian, and there are speculations that younger Dunkleosteus probably lived in shallow water while the adults ventured deep into the ocean. The Kelwasser and the Hangenberg events were two of the most prominent mass extinction events that closed out the Devonian period. At the end of this period, about 80% of all animal species on Earth were extinct. By the time the Carboniferous period began, Dunkleosteus and other placoderms no longer existed. Thanks for watching this far. See you next time.